Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about can you be a landlord without owning the property? Coming up. Okay, so I get this question from time to time. Hey Dave, can you be a landlord without owning the property? And the answer is yes. You can rent a property or lease a property from somebody else, and then you can then sublease your interest in the property to a tenant. This will allow you to be the landlord without owning the property. However, I wouldn't recommend you do this if you're doing long-term rentals. I have a couple friends who do this with short-term rentals like Airbnb and VRBO and vacation rental type properties. And for them, it makes a lot of sense because they will go find a property and they will rent or lease that property. It's the same thing for you know one, two, maybe three years. They'll go buy furniture and utensils and bedding and towels and all that good stuff and furnish the property and then they will lease it out short term on these websites. And it actually does pretty well being a tenant for a long term lease and then turning around and then subleasing or re-renting out the property short term. It's actually not a terrible play. However, if you are going to be a long-term landlord, then it's typically not suggested to rent the property from somebody else and then turn around and re-rent it. Reason being is long-term rentals don't typically make a ton of money each month individually two three four maybe even as much as five hundred dollars a month however when you are a landlord there are other advantages to owning a property and being a landlord so if cash flow is the only thing you're looking for well then sure you might be able to go lease a property and then turn around and re-rent it but typically you're gonna have a smaller monthly payment on a property even if you finance it if you are the owner of it you got to think whoever's leasing you the property they're making a spread so you're gonna lose that spread. So if you're the owner, typically the amount that you have to pay every month is gonna be less than what you'd be paying in rent. So ideally you will buy the property and you own it and you'll get a loan or pay cash or do whatever you need to do to get it and then you'll turn around and re-rent it. So cash flow is the first thing that I wanna mention. That is going to probably be less on a long-term rental if you are buying the property and then turning around and re-renting it. Now, I love owning properties. In fact, as of today making this video, I think I own roughly 60 or 65 properties. And the beautiful thing about owning these properties and all the properties that I own, I rent out other than my personal residence. And the beautiful thing about owning these properties is you get a lot of tax advantages for owning these properties. Every year you get to depreciate the property, which essentially is a phantom expense on your taxes that will help you offset income and reduce, if not completely eliminate, the amount of tax that you have to pay every year. So you get that. You also get to write off or deduct the amount of interest that you are paying every month to your bank or lender. So your interest expense is a tax deductible expense. Also, somebody else is gonna be paying off this property for you if you own it, right? So you get the depreciation, you get the, the fact that somebody else is paying it off for you, you get the interest expense, and there's even a couple more expenses that you're gonna get to write off, like accounting and legal and maintenance, all these things you're gonna get to write off if you own the property. But if you're just leasing the property, you're not gonna get credit for the interest that's going to the bank, the, the owner of that property is. And you're not gonna be able to depreciate that property unless it's in your name and you own it. So can you be a landlord without owning a property? The answer is yes, but I personally wouldn't recommend it if you're just trying to lease it out long term. If you're wanting to do something more creative with short-term rentals or vacation stays, then arbitraging a property, meaning you're gonna go rent it from somebody long-term and turn around and lease it out to somebody else, probably most likely short-term, isn't necessarily a terrible play. However, I'm more into the long-term rental game and leasing a property from somebody and paying that property off for them while I'm managing the tenants and trying to make a small spread doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me. So if you are looking to be more of a long-term landlord and or to use rental property and real estate to create wealth and income and offset taxes, leasing from somebody else and then turning around and releasing is not the best idea. You actually wanna be the owner so you can take advantage of the interest expense and the depreciation and any money that you put into maintenance is gonna essentially now be a write-off if you're an owner. If you're leasing that property, it's not. Maybe it's a business expense, but it's not gonna be categorized 
categorized and classified under maintenance for the property that you particularly own. So my advice would be not to be a landlord without owning a property, unless you plan on doing short-term rentals. If you're going to be doing long-term rentals, it's definitely not ideal. The only ideal situation is if you're able to pick up a property and rent it out for maybe four, five, six hundred a month, and then you can turn around and lease it for maybe twelve or fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars a month, then it might make sense to you. But typically, anybody that owns a property and has debt or a mortgage on it, they're going to want to raise the rent on you so they can capitalize, right? So they're going to be paying this property off and making money on top. And when that happens, the numbers don't typically work out. Guys, I love buying rentals. I've been in the game for almost 20 years. I love buying long-term rentals, have a few short-term, have some commercial, have some multifamily, and rental property is the best way to create wealth and financial freedom for you and your family. I would love to work with you directly if you need a coach or a mentor. I love helping people. So go head on over to BurrMethodMastery.com to learn more about how we can work together and you can work personally with me building your portfolio of rentals, buying your first rental, maybe buying your 20th rental. Check it out, BurrMethodMastery.com, and hopefully you learned a thing or two in this video about can you be a landlord without owning the property. Thanks for watching.